peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Truly lovely to welcome you back again for this second Sunday of being in the gathered church here in St Mary's. A very warm welcome to everyone here and of course a very warm welcome to everyone on Zoom this morning. And just a warning, a reminder to those on Zoom, you are being recorded, so please turn yourself off if you don't want to be recorded. Uh, and to a reminder to those in church um, that your faces are not being recorded during the service. So when I give out communion, we'll be doing so in front of the nave or to here. Just follow the instructions of the church warden to come down, cleanse your hands, come down the aisle, take communion, and then go back to your seats, if that's all right. Just a couple of quick notices, if I may. Firstly, a big thank you to Christopher, who's preaching for us this morning. Thank you for doing that, Christopher. Look forward to hearing your words for us today. Uh, and also, I want to say um, hello to Jack. Jack, do you want to come down a brief moment? Do you want to come down and stand in front of me in a socially distanced way? You can just stand on the carpet there, young man. Now, Jack, I've been here nearly eight years, and I've probably spent most of that time, which is most of your childhood, kind of bringing you out to the front of church and embarrassing you in various ways, I suspect. Yep. Um, but today is probably my last opportunity for a while because uh, I'm very pleased to say that Jack is off to university today. Um, he's off to um, Chichester to do your performing arts, musical theatre, yeah. musical theatre course at Chichester. So you're travelling down there today. So Jack, I wanted to bring you up firstly so everyone can give you a round of applause. Let's give Jack a big round of applause. Well done. And secondly, I want to pray a quick prayer of blessing on your journey and your new stage of life. Let's pray for Jack. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jack. We thank you for all he's brought to the life of this church uh, during his life so far. Father, we thank you for the many blessings he brings to those around him. And now, Father, as he starts this new stage on his journey of life, uh, we pray for his physical journey today down to Chichester. But most importantly, we pray for this journey through his time at university. Bless him on his course. May he find a fellowship with people down there. May he have a wonderful time and come back to us rejoicing in due course. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jack. You take your seat. Thank you. And also our Wayne and Louise here this morning. Wayne and Louise, give us a wave. Um, Wayne and Louise are getting married here in a few weeks' time. They were just get married previously and things got postponed. And I'm really pleased to say things have been reinstated. So we'd love to have you worshipping with us this morning, both of you. And we're now going to publish your bands of marriage and pray for you both as well, if we may. So I published the bands of marriage between Wayne Mark Barnett of this parish and Louise Jane Sturkin of this parish. And I also published the bands of marriage between James Grant Taylor of the parish of All Saints Taunton and Gemma Ellen Bartlett of the parish of All Saints Taunton. If any person here present knows any just cause or impediment why these couples should not be joined together in holy matrimony, you should declare. In each case, this is for the second time of us. Let's pray for these two couples. Heavenly Father, the source of all true love, we pray for Wayne and Louise, we pray for James and for Jenny. Grant to them joy of heart, seriousness of mind, and reverence of spirit, that as they enter into the oneness of marriage, they may be strengthened and guided by you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we look forward with joyful anticipation to your services. So let's prepare our hearts and minds to enter into the presence of God this morning by praying together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so in a moment of quietness, let's bring into the presence of God 
At those times this week, we have failed to live up to his calling on our lives. We take a moment of quiet. So let us confess our sins, impenitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In a slight change to what we did last week, shall we stand to say the Gloria together this week? We say together, Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so let us pray. for this week. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Do please be seated for the first reading. You can stand here for the reading. The reading is from Exodus. Chapter 14, sorry, verse 4, chapter 14, verse 19. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from the front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness. It lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall of them to their right and to their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army 
and threw the army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels, but they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians stepped before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of the Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall to them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel from that, that day from the Egyptians, and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work the Lord had done. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. <laughs> Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Peter came and said to him, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? <laughs> Huh? Jesus said to him, Please. not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you have not had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he should pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, to you O Christ. O Christ. Do you please be seated. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Greetings and good morning to you who are here in church and also to those who are joining us through Zoom and perhaps some who will be tuning into our service later on when it's been recorded. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Last weekend on the 5th of September, I met three members of the family of squadron leader Philip Campbell Pinkham, who 80 years ago, sorry, I haven't switched on my microphone in the church. There's two microphones I've got to cope with. <laughs> I think they're both on now. Uh, uh, squadron Leader Pinkham, who 80 years ago as commanding officer of 19 squadron uh, in the Royal Air Force, took off with his squadron from an RAF airfield in Essex 
and who was shot down by an incoming German Luftwaffe aircraft somewhere over the River Thames, crashing on the North Downs just above the Pilgrim's Way in Burling Parish. We met to remember the sacrifice of a young man of 25 who in common with many other pilots in the Battle of Britain lost his life in the defense of his and our country. I had the privilege of dedicating a new memorial cross at the place where he died and saying a prayer of thanksgiving with the family members and others. There was a group of about 25 of us there on that lovely morning with its marvelous view looking southward to West Morning and Borough Green. And as Mayor's chaplain, I was able to convey the greetings and appreciation of Councillor Joe Anderson of this act of remembrance just within the boundary of our borough. Sunday the 15th of September 1940 is regarded as the turning point in that battle, a point when the Royal Air Force began to gain the upper hand and obtain air superiority over the German Air Force. Hitler was intent on invading England, but he knew that he could not do that until he had obtained air superiority. And he was taken aback somewhat as the Luftwaffe, with superior numbers, began to lose the upper hand. Air Marshal Hugh Dowding, the Commander in Chief of Fighter Command at that time, revealed in his memoirs that he attributed the success of the Battle of Britain to divine intervention. And incidentally, on that Sunday, our Prime Minister Winston Churchill, with his wife Clementine, visited the battle to see the progress of it that day in the operation room at RAF Uxbridge. The operations room was restored some 25 years ago now with a plotting board just as it was at some point in that day on the 15th of September. And it's normally open, it is at this time, through booking uh, to go and visit. Usually Battle of Britain services are therefore held on or close to the 15th of September. This is not a full Battle of Britain service, but it seemed appropriate today at that critical time in the life of our nation of great uncertainty 80 years ago to remember something of that. During the exodus and the wilderness wanderings, the Israelites lived through a very stressful and uncertain 40 years. And as we look back on that period of the formation of the nation of Israel, with a record written from a theological perspective, it is easy to miss the uncertainty that many ordinary people felt. There were those who often criticized Moses' leadership, saying it would have been better to stay in Egypt as slaves rather than to endure the hardship of life in the desert. The Egyptian army was pursuing the escaping Israelites and so suddenly they were confronted with the Red Sea in front, the army behind and possibly soon to be around their flanks as well. No escape. Help, we've had it now. Many of them must have been thinking or even voicing aloud. Suddenly a dark cloud descended between the Egyptian army and the Israelites. The wind gets up and blows with gale force to thrust the shallow waters of the upper Red Sea out towards the Indian Ocean and the Israelites are able to move forward in the early morning light. A word about the walls of water on either side. I've often seen them portrayed in children's Bibles and in films as huge great vertical walls some hundred feet high. Nothing of the sort. Quite sufficient to cause a thinking person that the whole account is either made up or grossly distorted. In the Hebrew language, there are two words uh, that are used in the Old Testament 
translated as wall. One is choma, used of a defensive wall, such as a city wall, or a simple enclosure of an orchard or a vineyard. The other, kir, used as a wall of the house of, or other building, a vertical wall. The word used in Exodus is choma. It therefore is describing the water as a protection on either side of the Israelites, since it prevented a flanking movement by Pharaoh's army. The water needed only to be three or four feet in depth to prevent such a flanking movement, and didn't have to be a vertical wall like at the wall of a house. Some Israelites did not share the belief of their leader Moses in the God of all creation. They did not perceive that God was using his own creation with the laws of its operation, including providing air superiority to facilitate their escape from Egypt. They did not see that God was laying the foundation of a great plan of salvation that succeeding generations would celebrate in the Passover festival as God's supreme act of salvation of his chosen people. Such people would easily have looked back on that night and said, phew, that was a lucky escape, wasn't it? Such people, without faith in God, found the deprivations and uncertainty of the wilderness experience more than they could bear. They repeatedly complained about their leaders. Most of this year, we have been living and are still living through a time of uncertainty. Restrictions were easing, but with the possibility of a resurgence and certain resurgence in some places, some restrictions have had to be reimposed, both in this country and in other countries. No longer is it a fight between one country and another or an alliance of countries, but rather of all countries fighting an unseen, a hidden enemy. However, the threat is also a global force for unity and even cooperation against this common enemy. There have been plagues throughout history there are always illnesses abounding and it is difficult to understand the causes and the working of such things. The human race with its huge population now is having unexpected effects on the whole natural world. In dense populations, disease spreads more readily. It is difficult to understand the place of viruses in the created order. The chief certainty of life is that each of us will die. Part of the wisdom of life is to live positively through uncertainty towards that end. This is in part done by a firm belief in God, our Creator, who knows us each one, who loves us each one, the exodus and the wilderness experience was a challenging time uh, for the Israelites. And by no means all rose to that challenge. <clears throat> when the 12 spies were sent out to make a reconnaissance of the promised land, only two came back with a report based on faith in God's promise. We have the evidence of the supreme and loving God in his great saving act of the new covenant achieved through our Lord Jesus Christ. I was but four years old at the time of the Battle of Britain and was evacuated with my grandmother from Kent to Devon. For those living here in Kent, those in London enduring the nightly bombing which soon took place towards the latter part of the Battle of Britain, it must have been a very challenging time when some lost hope. One of the good things to come out of the Second World War 
was the founding of the Missionary Avi Aviation Fellowship as three former Royal Air Force officers, two pilots and an engineer, believed that God was calling them to use the skills that they had acquired in wartime to serve him in peacetime in serving countries in Africa. That new venture, which has flourished, flourished over the past 75 years, now flies in some 26 countries in the world. The last surviving founder member, the engineer officer Stuart King, who continued throughout his life to take an active interest in MAF, died on the 29th of August at the age of 98. We thank God for a humble, dedicated, and visionary servant of God. Let us, who are living in a particular time of uncertainty, not only because of COVID-19, but also not knowing quite how we're going to progress as a country when we fully leave the European Union in a few months' time. Let us continue to trust in God, a God who is a loving and faithful God. Amen. Thank you, Christian. Let us stand to affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, one God. the Father, God, the Almighty, Almighty. maker Make of God. heaven and earth, all that is all seen and unseen. And unseen. We believe, we believe in one Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, the only the Son, Son of God, of God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, God, from God, from God, God light from God, light, light, true God from, God from true God, from God begotten not made, of one, of one being, being with, with the Father, Father through, through him all things were made. For, for, for us and us for our salvation, salvation, he came down from heaven was in of the, the Holy Spirit, Spirit and the Virgin, Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our, our sake, he crucified under Pontius Pontius Pilate. He suffered, he suffered death and was buried. On, on the third, third day, day he rose again, 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 in accordance with the Scriptures. scriptures. He ascended, he ascended into, into heaven, heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his and kingdom, kingdom will have no end. We, we believe, believe in the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, the Lord, the, the giver of life, who proceeds, proceeds from the Father and the Son, and the Son who with the Father and Son has worshipped and, worship and glorified, glorified, who has who spoken has through the prophets. prophets. We believe, we believe in one in the Holy Catholic, Catholic and Apostolic, and Apostolic Church. Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and, and the life, life of the world, world to, come. to come. Amen. And so we sit or kneel to Let us. You've got me again. I'm actually reading uh, the prayers which Nicola has prepared for this morning. So let us pray. Father, we thank you that we've been able to regather physically at St. Mary's today. And we also thank you for your wonderful gift of technology so that those of us who are not able to attend in person can also join in worshiping you. We thank you that so far the new COVID-19 restrictions mean that we cannot do this we pray, Lord, for the people who have established new routines during lockdown, which do not include attending their regular place of worship. We pray that they will be prompted to remember the sense of fellowship and belonging that attending a place of worship provides and will decide to return, whether in person or online. Lord, in your mercy. Oh, we thank you for the wonderful weather we've been enjoying. And we pray that Stephanie's garden party this afternoon will be well attended 
and that we will not only enjoy each other's company, but that the much needed money is raised for the Macmillan Mercies also. We pray for other people who have organized events only to have to cancel them. Be with them, Lord, we pray, and bring them your peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we remember Stuart King, who sadly died 98, at age 98 a few days ago, who was one of the founder members of MAF. And according to Ruth Whitaker, the chief executive officer of MAF, Stuart, an engineer, remained filled with the same determination and unwavering faith that took him across Africa to pioneer MAF 75 years ago. He continued to visit the offices in Folkestone quite regularly until recently. Lord, in your mercy. And Lord, as we think of loss, we pray for the family and friends of Enid Jones, who died a year ago. And from years mind, Lillian Swainson, Peter Romney, Dennis Charles Wildish, George Hartop Smith, and James Herbert Stanley. We pray for our community, Lord, especially for those in Palmer's Brook and Lonewood Way. We also pray, Lord, for the people who are struggling. We pray, Lord, for those businesses who are dependent on Christmas and now face uncertainty for those of us who are feeling anxious about our plans for the festive season, when we would normally see families and friends. We ask you, Lord, to bring us hope and a spirit of creativity. We pray for those who are worried about a second wave of the virus and for those who may fear another lockdown as they are already feeling isolated. We spend a few moments bringing people individually on our own hearts to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we thank you that whilst we are living in a world of uncertainty, fear and chaos, that we are reminded in your word that this is the place that you inhabit too. And that if we seek you, we will find you. It might not be in the way we desire or expect, but we know that you are a God of miracles. You are ever present and ever willing to spend time with us. And all we have to do is to call on your name. Help us to trust you, Lord, for our present, our future, and help us, Lord, to let go and put our hands in your hands whilst you lead us through these challenging times. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the sake, the sake of your of Son, our Amen. Savior, Amen. Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us stand for the people. I'll meet those in Zoom under. We are the body of Christ in the one spirit. We're all baptized into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's offer one another. A sign of peace. Peace be with you, everybody. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I'm waving, but I have no time. Peace be with you.
Hello. Please feel free either to remain standing for the Eucharistic prayer or to sit or kneel as you prefer and feel able. Please don't feel obliged to do whatever you feel uncomfortable doing. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, you made the world and love your creation. You gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpour may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which he shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence, his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Saint Mary and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. And so we sit or kneel to pray. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body. 
because we all share in one bread. We say together, Lamb of God. We do not presume to come to this, your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Those not receiving communion here today, but present on Zoom, that we pray together. Send your Holy Spirit upon us, that, though separated by distance, we may still, through faith, be partakers in the benefits of Christ's offering, of his body and his blood. This we ask through the same Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I'm now going to cleanse my hands and don my mask, and if you could follow the instructions of the church wardens, and please come and receive.
Lord God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, 
and one in joy and simplicity of heart. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us, either physically or spiritually, with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.